Hello, I have my VR stuff fixed and figured out again, so I'm going to be going over some SMT5 information in the virtual world. So there was a comment, I believe, on uh, my theory video for the new Nahobino form that was asking about the source of information for uh, Tsukiyomi being a protofiend like his brother Algami. And um, it's the that information's kind of been floating around for a while and talked about. But if you're someone who's only played like the English version of SMT5, um, there's a lot of, there's like bits and pieces of information that was, as far as I'm aware, there's, there's stuff that's been cut out of the English version that's present in the Japanese version. And um, before I even, like, before I mentioned like where I came across one of the sources of that information, um, people were discussing him being a protofiend for a while and like, uh, after a while, after I played, like, uh, SMT5, like, I wasn't aware of that. That was something I, I, I thought he was just, like, a demon being disguised as a human or something. Because, like, uh, the only, I think the only line that they, that uh, Koshimizu mentions in the uh, English version is just, like, simply, oh, uh, by the way, Algami, he just says it as, like, a, like, such a throwaway thing. Uh, this this happens in the game uh, as well. But like, oh, my brother is Susano, by the way, and his body was based on mine. And that's pretty much all you get. He doesn't mention anything outside of that. And because someone was asking about that, and because, like, it's information that's been around, and I had also had been reading that that line, a line about him actually being a, a proto-fiend is in the Japanese version. I wanted to look over the um, perfect official guide that they released for SMT5 that's only available in Japan. Um, and I had got it... I, funny enough... So I want to discuss some stuff in that strategy guide. That, just like a lot of stuff for SMT5, uh, what there is, what exists in that strategy guide for for story or char characters is like it's breadcrumbs. There's not a lot. Uh, there's like a thing at the the back of the guide. There's all like a, a a basic synopsis of the story and the characters in the beginning of the guide. And if you go all the way back. To, to the last page's guide, like in the 400s, um, there's like more information that they provide on the characters and the story and everything. And um, the most interesting stuff that I found was was stated like in a in a very like it, one sentence for both Algami and Koshimizu that that like when I first saw it, I wasn't looking for it originally. Uh, when I first saw it, I was like, wait, what? What? Am I reading this right? This this can't be right. And this was like before I even like heard of people talking about um, Tsukiyomi or Koshimizu being a protofiend. But let me, let me mention that. Let me mention how I even came across the what got me interested in looking over the uh, perfect official fi uh, guide for SMT5 in the first place. I don't know. I, it may have been me just sort of like... Uh, Looking at information about art books in regards to SMT games, and um, I don't know if they made one for Apocalypse, but I definitely they may have made one. But I do know that SMT4 got an art book that has a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, it it's one that I've definitely seen because uh, we here, like, I, of course, I have to travel to it, but there's a, a Japanese bookstore that I have access to that gets like uh, game art books imported to it, so I have easier access to that kind of stuff. I haven't seen the SMT5 one, by the way, because if I did, I would have picked up the physical version of it, but uh, I believe the SMT4 one was there, so they have, a, you know, SMT4 has an art book, and that's got a lot of valuable information in it. Um, but I saw, I guess I was looking at uh, listings for the perfect official guide, to see if there was any extra information, and I believe the sell page, it might have been through Amazon, or another source, there's multiple sources where you could probably get that guide from, and uh, they sometimes they'll have like one or two preview pages for that guide that you can look at, and uh, one of them actually had, uh, I did like a, a rough translation over it, but one of them was just like, uh, a preview showing like one of the character pages that shows like the student characters and so like I, I did like kind of a rough translation of like a, a part of that page and it was talking about some really interesting stuff about the the surnames of the characters and how they're tied how they were named those names the surnames were tied to 
different Japanese shrines that um, a lot of them are tend to be like tied uh, to the like the Gion faith, so um, tied to worship of Gozu Tenno or Susano. So uh, there were a lot of those, and, and you know, <laughs> SMT five is very vague. Um, like they don't tell you enough directly that uh, you know you are Susano or he's Susano or anything. It, it when they actually tell you, it's very throwaway when it does happen, but. The game is filled with a ton of references to Susano and the lore and everything like that. It's just like, it's just not in your face. <laughs> but like, there's so much of the game that, that references the god though and the, the mythology behind it. But because of that, because I saw that, I was like, wait a minute. That's pretty interesting. Does this guide have like extra information they don't really like talk about in the game? And so, um... I was determined to get the book, and of course it's Japanese only, it was available on like Japanese Amazon, and um, I didn't have, at the time, and I don't think it, like I said, I don't think it was at Kino Kuniya at the time uh, when I went there before, so I was like, okay, am I going to have to like try and get a digital version? It would be, it'd be much quicker, maybe, if I got a digital version, and um, if you get, you can get digital books. Uh, there is a digital uh, version of that SMT5 uh, perfect guide as well that you can get. You can read through like a um, web or a, uh, it's a Kindle app. You can actually get one like, you know, that you can use locally on your computer too to just to read books and stuff with. So that's what I did. And um, <laughs> I did have to go through a process in order to get that, that book though, because, you know, I had to make a Japanese account and... I don't really buy stuff. I have other means of getting, you know, Japanese items uh, that do not require me to, use, to go through Amazon. But I don't think PlayAsia... I don't think... Usually I use, like, PlayAsia and stuff. I don't think even PlayAsia had that fucking book. So I had to go through uh, Amazon Japan. And uh, Amazon Japan doesn't, like, use PayPal or anything like that. Um, so I think I had to do some sort of process with gift cards in order to get, like, m like credits onto the Japanese account to finally get the book and it was like a lot of trouble but anyways I did get a digital version of that book now before I mention any of the information I'm gonna like I can only show I can only show like text that was grabbed through like OCR methods by the way uh, there's some easy ways to, to be able to get, um, like, you know, Japanese text off of a, a page or something if you need to, uh, for translation purposes, different methods, but, um, I did that for, uh, certain parts of that book in order to be able to, like, try and get some translations done. I cannot show any pages of the book. I can probably show you, I, you know, it, it, since I'm talking about it, I will show the cover, of course, and what it looks like, because that's actually on the, you know, any... Any websites that list it for sale are going to show the cover or the book or probably the back of it. Maybe like one or two pages. I absolutely cannot show scans at all. It's a <laughs> Especially now, uh, a lot of like uh, Japanese game companies and, and even outside of that are extremely strict on art books now. Uh, you, you can get in trouble if you show scans or anything like that. Even videos. Of course, you already know. If you don't know already, I did get struck by like Katakawa for uh, making a video that showed uh, Famitsu scans that other people actually grabbed. I, I was not the one that scanned them, but I made the mistake of showing the scan. So I'm not going to do a number two. No, no, not a second time. I will not show those scans. Um, so there's like, th honestly, there's only like three or four things I can I can talk about. And then there's like a, like I said on a, um, I was mentioning there's like an alignment chart. It, it basically, they have this cool looking, um, it's like a chart that it's like a spectrum between, uh, there's, there's, okay, it's got like two things. It's got light on the top, dark, dark at the bottom, and then you have a spectrum that goes from law to chaos, and then in the middle it's gray, you know, for, um, neutral, and then it tends to place, as a bunch of the demons placed, um, uh, you know, around the chart, and then the Nahobino is interesting enough, like, place somewhere in the middle, but I'm gonna just, you know, if I talk about it, uh, I'll just do a recreation of it. as one of the other things I noticed that was pretty interesting in the book. Um, but let's go over the actual, uh, information. Uh, very, very little information. But I think, um, I'm mentioning, I'm going over this because people want to know if there was, like, um, what sources there were. And honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna say like I ran, 
Especially with one of the things I read in relation to Sukiyomi, the protofine thing. I, I ran it through like three <laughs> method, methods of translation and then I actually sometimes when I, I have, when I'm not sure what I'm reading is correct, I will throw it to a friend of mine. Uh, some of you may know, if you watch like Vine Sauce or something, uh, Vinny's editor, the editor for Full Sauce, Johnny Monkey, um, I'm friends with him and he has an interest in like SMT and Persona. And he also is pretty proficient. He's not like a, a native speaker of Japanese or anything like that. He, he's pretty good at speaking like, you know, he, he he's good with different languages and, and also reading them too and translating some stuff. So if sometimes like when it comes to Japanese, like if, if, if I'm trying to like translate stuff and I'm like, oh, okay, I don't know if I'm like reading or translate, you know, this correctly or anything, I'll run it by him and be like, okay, is this what it actually says? And then I'll get like sort of like, if I run it by him, then you, uh, then I'll know, okay, this is probably what it actually is. Uh, first thing I'll go over, uh, that, you know, th there's two things, uh, that I feel they're probably going to be important, I think, important information for SMT5 Vengeance. First thing, though, um, Tsukiyomi being a protofine. Okay, so, in the back of the, uh, Japanese, uh, the perfect official guide for SMT5, like I said, they have, um, there's basic information about characters in front, and then there's like detailed information in the back that probably includes like spoilery stuff, so it's probably why they put it in the back. Uh, one of those is for Tsukiyomi, and they probably put it in the back because the, the screenshot that they include with it is from the end of the game when he's with Yuzuru in the, um, the temple the, where the throne is and stuff. Um, there's, it's funny because this thing that they mention is... It's not in, like, the main paragraph for him. It's, like, at the description at the bottom of the picture. It's, like, you're including this information that I feel is important, but it's actually in, like, the, the freaking, like, description. Uh, it, and like I said, I, I've run it by, like, three different things, and also my friend Johnny did you know, make sure what I read it was correct. Even still, I feel like, you know, in, um, I've probably mentioned this to people, too, is that I thought I was crazy. <laughs> reading this. The first time I read it, I was like, wait, that can't be right. Is this book, is it a fluke? Um, but basically it mentions, um, this is a description at the bottom picture. Basically, it says like, um, as you can tell from his appearance, he's based on like the model of the, uh, artificially created demon known as the Algami type. It's saying like, like he's based on the appearance, hey, he's, he's the, he's a Algami model, he's an algami type model of the, um, you know, proto-fiends. And, um, it's possible it could be read different ways, but when I saw it, I was like, what? That can't be right. Like, when I first saw that, like, last year, when I got this book, I was like, that can't be right. Like, what? They never mentioned him being a proto -fiend in the English version of the game. I have read, though, Way after I saw that, uh, you know, I read a bunch of different threads, SMT threads and stuff, and I, I was coming across people mentioning that and saying that there was a line in the Japanese version of the game, and I was like, what? They kept this, kept that out, the, the English version? And then, um, just, I swear, just the other day, and I don't, and the, the Japanese users, you know, I, I read tweets and stuff from, um, Japanese SMT artists and everything like that. They actually, the funny thing is, is like, they, they actually discuss the games and the lore and everything like that. I feel way more than, like, Western Twitter does. Like, English SMT and Persona Twitter tend to, like, fight about shit way more. <laughs> they fight about things more than they, like, discuss the games. And, of course, like, you got... I'm, I, I felt so tempted to make a video about this this issue too but i don't think i have to mention it much but like um just people talking you know when it comes to persona especially talking more about the dating aspect of the games instead of like the games themselves like the the other the more the major aspects of the games and and not dating which is such a minor aspect but like you know you know how things is if you're in the community you know how it is um, but the Japanese Twitter users, like, I follow them, and like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to read things as best I can <laughs> with the methods that I have available, uh, but they do discuss, they discuss a lot of lore and, and things about the games, and it's, it's just, like, fun to read and see what people are saying, especially when new information 
is released. And just the other day, I came across someone talking about um, Koshimizu and Ogami being protofiends. So I was like, oh, okay, I guess, you know, they acknowledge it too. It must be somewhere in the game. Because I can't imagine... The reason I'm saying it's probably something they they saw in the game, but not necessarily in the, the perfect guide, is because the other thing that I'm going to mention that I went what the fuck as is seems like something that not even like Japanese a lot of Japanese users seem to know um so there is so we have the thing in the the perfect guidebook that mentions you know uh Koshimizu possibly being a Algami type protofine uh model now the other thing I came across under Algamis now this was listed in the main paragraph that they had for um, Algami. And uh, it's, it's quite fascinating. I feel like this is important for Vengeance, especially. Let me see. So in, um, I had to actually find it. I have to actually like read the stuff that I had here going over it. Um, so there's a, a sentence in uh, the paragraph for Algami in the back of the book that says his true name is Susano. And he was specifically created as being to inherit the power of Tsukuyomi. And um, some, I think like the line either reads like um, a celestial god of Japan or the, the god of the Amatsu Kami. But it, it mentions that he was intended... Now, okay, it's not the first time I heard this, by the way. Not the first time. But in other places, I've seen it mentioned, oh, well, Algami was intended to just inherit the full power of the Amatsukami. It doesn't say Sukuyomi specifically, it just says full power Amatsukami. So, okay, Susano, Sukuyomi, Amaterasu. That's why I assume, because those are the big three. Those are the Amatsukami, right? Um, the funny thing is, despite knowing that, and it's it being talked about in, in a few places, even outside this guidebook, Maybe they mentioned the game in the Japanese version. I don't know still. <laughs> I played the English version, but um, it's not something they actually explore in, in the original version of 5. They don't. They don't explore it at all. And it's funny that they even have this in the, the perfect guide, because it's like, you guys didn't even... Exp well, I guess they're exploring it now, aren't they? Uh, this, this thing about Algami specifically being created. If this line is correct... If it's not a fluke, it mentions that he was created as being to specifically inherit the power of Tsukuyomi, his brother, his older brother. Uh, it mentions Tsukuyomi specifically. We know they don't do anything with that in the original version of uh, Shin Megami Tensei V. But now, like, it just seems so fucking obvious. We have Vengeance coming out. They've been showing uh, a ton of, like, the new... Nahobino form, which obviously seems, you know, I already made a video about it where it, I pointed out different things saying, hey, he's probably fused with Tsukiyomi somehow, which, um, I'm seeing some new theories to, to kind of like counter the whole thing of him, like actually physically fusing with Tsukiyomi. We don't know what the case is yet, but some people are saying that, um, instead of like fully fusing with Tsukiyomi, maybe Tsukiyomi has like uh, like when they're in the lab, maybe he has access to like his own essence or something. I guess if he's, if you think about it, it's not impossible because if he's a protofiend, that means, you know, his essence exists in some form, just like how they're able to have access to Susano's essence to create different Algami models, right? So he probably has access to like his own essence. Um, and maybe that's how, uh, the new Nahobino form comes about. Maybe he's able to, like, um, if, if the protagonist is, like, compatible with the Algami unit, uh, maybe there's something to where he, he's able to be fused with, uh, Tsukiyomi's essence or something, too, without, like, actually fully, uh, fusing with Koshimizu. I don't know. We still have to find out, but it's, it is interesting. Um, I still wonder why Tsukiyomi, though. I hope they, um... Well, actually, no. <sighs> They're gonna have to explain that. I hope they explain that. Uh, the only thing I can think of is, um, because Algami... The, the Algami models, the units, they are based on, uh, Koshimizu's body. So that's probably why... It's literally, they're just clones of Koshimizu. They have Susano shoved in them. And, uh, the, the reason they probably look different... Like, the reason Algami probably looks a bit different than his bro his older brother is probably because of the essence. And maybe the... I, I don't know if the suit 
is a result of that essence or something they specifically um, put on him or if he was designed, like I said, if he was meant to inherit the full power of the Amatsukami or Sukiyomi, maybe he was, uh, the Algami units are, are designed in a different way than, than Koshimizu, if Koshimizu was supposed to also be a protofiend. Um, if he's a protofiend though, that implies that uh, the original Sukuyomi died, but there was enough of him intact compared to his other siblings to where mentally he still seems to like know all the shit that's going around and he still has his memories and everything like that. He just, if he's a protofiend, he just doesn't have his original like demon body or anything. He's acting. It probably had something to do with him having to take the place of the prime minister too, maybe. Maybe they gave him a different body or something. I don't know. So many questions, not enough answers. Okay, so the the other thing I wanted to go over, uh, the, uh, before I get to like the alignment chart thing, is the thing about the names, which I found interesting, like I said, there's, there's not a lot. The most important thing that I wanted to discuss was uh, the things related to the two brothers. Um, the other thing that I found interesting, it's just more of a, it's not important, it's not that important. Uh, but there was a thing mentioning, um, you know, when it comes to deciding the, the name, it, it was more of a suggestive thing, uh, when it comes to trying to figure out what you should name the main character, like what fits, uh, you know, with the themes and the world of Shin Megami Tensei Five, and, and how they decide that for the names of the other characters. And of course, uh, in the thing, it actually mentions that most of the characters are, um, so they have like their their given name, not their surname, but their actual given name. It's usually, it's a name written in katakana, and then their uh, most of the characters' surnames tend to be named after a shrine. And like I said, um, there are different shrines around Japan that are dedicated to like the Gion faith, you know, Gozu Tenno, or uh, shrines dedicated to Susano. And even the characters that aren't tied to Susano have uh are have surnames that are shrines that are actually like shrines of worship to Susano so so I'm gonna go over kind of like the rough translation of this name thing it I, I think it's just interesting to bring up like I said it doesn't have a lot of importance to the story it's more symbolism than anything with the, the shrines that are used for the surnames uh it mentions like you know Yuzuru Atsuda is uh based on Atsuda shrine which is located in Nogoya City, Aichi, uh, Aichi Prefecture. You have uh, Dezai's last uh, Dezai's surname, which is Daizaifu Tenmangu Shrine, located in Dezaifu City, Fukuoka Prefecture. And then you have uh, Tao Isunokami, uh, which is based on Isunokami Shrine, uh, located in Tenri City in the Nara Prefecture. It says, uh, furthermore, uh, so, so, so Hori Itsuku, uh, Itsukishima was based on the Itsukishima Shrine, which is located in Miyajima sh City in Hiroshima. And then you have uh, Yakumo, uh, Shohei Yakumo. Uh, his uh, surname seems to be based on uh, the Yakumo Shrine and Yasaka Shrine. Yasaka especially is, is tied to the Gion faith. Uh, this originates from Japanese myth mythological worship of the Gion faith, uh, who, you know, they also worship Susano no Mikoto. Um, and it says it's, it, it makes a point of this, and this has been mentioned before, it says like, oh, it's no coincidence that they gathered at Joan Re uh, Academy with uh, surnames that are tied to, you know, th this whole thing. Uh, you have all these characters here that exist in the school that have uh, ties to the gods and everything like that. Um, it has like some suggestions for the main character, which I find interesting because uh, th there's a lot of stuff that kind of, that came up about the uh, main character's canon name. I don't know if we're ever gonna get any like I don't know literature or, or like a side thing or something uh, that mentions that gives him that finally gives him a canon name because even the demi fiend, <laughs> the demi fiend has uh, you know. He's called Naoki Kashima, and, and that's mainly, I think that's mainly from the drama CD that uh, is based on Nocturne. I don't know if there's any other uh, sources, like official sources, that uh, that call him Naoki, uh, but there's a drama CD. And um, 
you know, like SMT4 and SMT4 uh, Apocalypse, they, they give the, the main characters names. They have names. Uh, but for the, the main character of SMT5, there was something found in the... It may have been a placeholder name in the English version of the game called the uh, Kei Amimura. And I guess the thing is, is like it wasn't present in the, the Japanese version, but some people say... Um, I think in like either one of the earlier Persona games or one of the earlier SMT games that the the English version of the game ends up being an earlier build than the Japanese version. So like it, if it's an earlier build, then that um, that version of the game has like a placeholder, uh, would have like a Japanese placeholder name for him. And it, it said like Kei Amimura, which Amimura, as far as I know, is not an actual shrine. It's not a Susano shrine, but Amimura is like reference to uh, Susano by like the you know the Murakumo Ame uh, I think it's like Ame no Murakumo so it's like one of the moves that he uses and also reference to the sword that Susano uses K I don't remember what that's supposed to be um, but it sort of it does sort of fit if you just disregard the whole shrine thing. For the last name, uh, K Amimura sort of fits the format in the same way as the the other characters, the way the other characters are named in the game. But if not, if that's not his actual canon name, we we still don't know yet. Um, maybe they would follow the the format of this, where he has uh, the first name written in like katakana, and then uh, you have the last name being one of the shrines. So I guess it would be it would have to be a Susana shrine that hasn't been used for any of the characters in the game yet, possibly. It does have some suggestions of first names, though. It says, um... These are example names that it says here. It says Ise, Kanda, Akage, Kotohira, Udo, Haruna, etc. Uh, that's only, I guess, it's a suggestion for his name, to, to what to put in for his name, if you kind of want to follow the format of the way the other char- the way the other characters are named, and sort of, like, follow the way the world is... And everything like that. You don't have to though. It's just like a suggestion thing. But I do find this information interesting. Last thing I want to go over is uh, the this alignment chart that they have here. And um, I will mention that they said that this, the placements for all of these demons. And this, you know, this spectrum of light and dark. And uh, law, neutral and chaos. It, it was where the demons are placed. It says was decided by the editorial staff. And um... This is a Katakawa published book, but I, you know, I'm pretty sure it was overseen by the team that did SMT5 and, and Atlas. So, you know, there's got to be some truth to it. Um, it. And it's something I didn't really like when it comes to uh, the different demons in the games and the uh, alignments that they have. It's not something I really paid attention to outside of like story stuff where things are specifically like leaning towards a certain way. And of course, like... I, I do find it funny that there is an alignment thing here because I I swear, and I don't know if this is something you guys have encountered being in the community when five came out and and when people played to the point of getting to the endings. And of course the endings themselves, and this is mentioned in the book too, when it comes to like the um, the gameplay aspect of of making the decisions to get certain endings. The endings themselves are not labeled law neutral and chaos. They aren't. Uh, they're, they're mentioned like, uh, it's order, um, destroy the throne or humanity, and then, uh, I forgot what the chaos one is. Uh, I think in the, the, um, perfect guide it's labeled as transformation, or to, to, to recreate the world or something like that, or world of gods. I think that's what it is. Um, I think because of that though... And I know this, there was a lot of questions about those endings and like, oh, is this, are, do these fit the alignments or not? And because they, they, because the alignment reps, <laughs> you, okay, it's confusing. You have one side of the people who play the games who are like, oh, this game doesn't have the alignments, the traditional alignments of SMT. So, so not, there's no such thing as, as alignment reps and the endings don't represent alignments. And you have people who are like, there are alignments in the games and the characters do represent those alignments, but oh, they don't fit the traditional way those, those alignments tend to be. So then like, you know, we don't like the way they're presented. <laughs> 
Oh my god. I think I mentioned in the theory video or another video where uh, I said I do like it when the alignments, when law, neutral, and chaos are presented in different ways. Like where they don't follow this specific, you know, thing set by like, you know, start in SMT1 where law always has to be this. Neutral always has to be this, or chaos ha has to be this. I like when they sort of like lean a different way. Like some people said that law in, uh, I guess the way, just the way like Abdil and Desai is like, like for example, some people feel that um, a, like a lot of the alignments in this game, you know, I I if you believe they have, they, they are tied to an alignment, a lot of people say they feel more chaos leaning like oh law feels more chaos leaning or or maybe the chaos rep feels more orderly neutral i don't know about neutral in this game <laughs> actually there's a, there's a, you know what neutral feels chaos too if you do the destroy the throne uh ending i suppose it, it's definitely more chaotic some people feel like oh they'll say like oh well no that's not neutral that's chaos i don't know it's <laughs> it's so confusing it, it's better i don't know on on one hand I have uh, people who have played some of the games, and, and especially like Nocturnes, uh, reasons like the like the the reasons instead of having the traditional alignments. And I think it, because of that, and after playing those games, some people are like, "Oh well, SMT shouldn't be following the alignments or trying to put things into alignment boxes anymore. We should just have something like the reasons." I I don't disagree, but the alignments are so is such a um, it feels like something that is, is very characteristic of, of SMT, though. Like, I don't think that's something that should be abolished from the series. It's like something that's, that the games are that are very much tied to the whole, like, you know, thing with the law, neutral and chaos. Like, it's just something that's, that's very strongly, the games are strongly tied to, right? They just, it's just like, throughout the series, even with the spinoffs, even with Persona, uh, they have different ways of representing those alignments. They aren't always a specific way. And so people are like, oh, well, I don't know. I, I don't want to go deeply into that discussion because it just gets fucking confusing because you have people who believe the alignments should be a, a specific way and other people who don't, and then you have other people who prefer reasons. So it gets really confusing. Um, it didn't matter. I wanted to say... I didn't pay attention too much to, you know, if the demons themselves, like the ones you use, if they had any alignment attached to them, because it didn't matter in SMT5. You actually have some older games where the alignments actually matter. Hell, I'm fucking like, uh, I, I'm still going through, slowly making my way through SMT1 and trying to finish it. Um, and uh, that's a game that locks you out of using certain demons if you uh, end up going with certain alignments. Like when you make even like not even halfway through the game, uh, you, even when when you start making like certain decisions, it already like starts tagging you with alignment, and then you're you're pretty much like you might have, for example, like like say I had some really good chaos uh, aligned demons in my, in my party or in my stock. And then, um, the game is like, oh, by the way, you're this alignment now because you did this and this and this. And I'm like, what the fuck? I thought I was, I was neutral or whatever. Um, <laughs> and so I get, I get my, I get some really good locked out of using certain, uh, demons that only follow a specific alignment. And so I'm like, well, shit, I can only use them as uh, fusion material now. And there are other SMT games and spinoff games that do where the alignments of the demons actually matter and are, are part of the gameplay aspect and how they behave towards you or how you can use them. SMT didn't really, SMT 5 didn't really have that. Uh, Nocturne, as far as I know, like, uh, I haven't played all the SMT games, of course, so I don't know, like, how many rely on the, the alignment thing when it comes to gameplay, but I don't think, like, three, the, Nocturne didn't really do anything with it. Of course, that's a game that doesn't even have the traditional alignments, it has reasons for the endings, but they didn't really, I don't feel they did anything with that, with the alignments, the demons having alignments, but, um, it is kind of interesting that they have this chart here. Uh, you also have them, um, and I don't think this is like race specific either, because you have demons from the same race, like in different um, alignments on this chart here, and you also have light and dark. Uh, so you have like um, you have light law, dark law, and then you have just light generally, like the the middle 
um, and dark in the neutral space, and then you have light chaos and uh, dark chaos. So light law has a lot of the um, angel type demons. You have Sharosa, you have Panagia. Um, I think Tau's like the only Panagia. I don't know. Was Mary one too? Mary, I think uh, Maria or Mary was a Panagia as well. They're like the they're like Saint God type of entities that are in light law. Um, it says that dark, there's a description or dark law that says that it's actually a pretty rare combination. Um, so you have like, uh, Ganesha, not Ganesha, what the fuck's his name? <laughs> the other elephant that is not Ganesha. I can't believe I forgot his name. Mushu, uh, Skunion Bird, which I forgot his name of, um, and, uh, so there's actually only a few, apparently, only a few demons that fall, uh, fall under dark law, because I guess law, generally, law gets associated with light. Uh, you have, like, the, the middle here, um, has a handful of demons that are, like, uh, I guess neutral, tend to be on the neutral side, however, they're, they are separated in two, so you have, like, uh, light neutral demons that are... A little bit more towards the law side and then you have light neutral demons that are more on the chaos side which that that totally makes sense for yakumo's there didn't you find it interesting that that yakumo's in there he's not a demon but it does say that he i guess he counts because he's considered a uh he i think it has him labeled as a superhuman so he has demonic uh, abilities or he has abilities like a demon but i don't know if that's because of his um family heritage like he has like uh so, some like psychics in his family and then um i guess him being around nua for so long probably would have given him some abilities as well i don't know i don't know if that's well explained but he is in the um god this is this is confusing light neutral chaos because you can have two alignments apparently um, and actually, when you look at the official perfect vi uh, guide, when you look at all the, um, I would recommend getting it if you're interested, even though it's probably never going to get localized. If you're interested in seeing the full renders of the demons, which I cannot show, I can't show those, those scans, I can't, I can't like, well I haven't scanned it, I, I can't show like the book or anything or, or any copy of stuff, so, but, um, the book has the, the full renders of the demons that show up where you only see in the game uh, their portraits. If you want to see the full body of those portraits, uh, those exist in this book. I don't know if there's any other source where the full body renders for the demons show up, but you can get if you can get access to this book, they'll be in there. Um, but yeah, you have um, there's a list of all the demons that you can get in the game, and it shows their levels and everything like that, and it actually shows their alignments. And some of them, and I'm sure this is a thing in the, the um, older games too, I just didn't pay attention to it as much, because I've only played so many, like a small handful of SMT games, I still gotta get through them. Um, but there, there's definitely demons that are, uh, you know, two alignments, you'll have like, uh, like for example, you have you have something that's like neutral, neutral, uh, like uh, neutral chaos because the they're primarily let's say the demon is primarily neutral, but they lean towards chaos. So there's stuff. It, it is interesting. There's there's a lot of different combinations like that. Um, it's just crazy, <laughs> but I find it interesting that the Nahobino, where the Nahobino is placed, and maybe this is tied to. You know how the true uh ending is in this game which you know a lot of people label as being neutral uh or the true neutral ending or true human ending but he's actually placed on the um neutral dark chaos side and um i guess you could count the the two neutral endings that exist in the game you are very like a lot of people i, I to me, like, I'm not too bothered by the true neutral ending. I understand in some ways why it has to be the way it is. And I think the I think uh, when it comes to a lot of the endings in SMT games, you have to accept that they're not always going to be ideal. Most of the time, they suck. They, like, <laughs> there was a, a comment on a video that was going over, uh, the, I think, the cutscenes for one of the endings, but it, it summed it up perfectly. 
it, where someone said, no matter what ending I, I chose, I always feel like I'm doing something wrong. That's the feeling I get when it comes to the SMT endings is like, you, it never feels quite right. You know, this, there shouldn't be a wrong or a right answer. It's just up to you and what you feel and what you personally believe is right to do. That Like, I don't think there's any wrong or right answers. People will fight over that shit, though, I swear. People will fight. That's That's one thing. Amongst many things that the SMT community will fight over is, oh, which ending is the right ending? Everyone, and it's funny because everyone has their own beliefs. So they're going to be like, oh, well, I, you know, I have these kind of beliefs. And so I believe this specific ending is the right ending and the best for mankind or the best for demons or whatever. And that's the way it tends to be. Um, but yeah, the, the two neutral endings in five, um, I guess like the true human ending it, is probably like neutral neutral maybe uh and then you have the destroy the throne which people say feels more like a, a chaos ending than neutral but uh you could see like the the one where you destroy the throne as being uh neutral chaos i guess because it like here and um like i said this is just this chart thing here is just something that's decided by the editorial staff of the people who put together the book overseen by uh the team who made the game so they put Bino in neutral dark chaos <laughs> that probably fits um if i if i were to think <sighs> i mean he's supposed to be susano and uh susano is definitely not like a light <laughs> i think I don't know if he's ever been uh, labeled as a law demon at all. He he's the the thing with him is he's like a multifaceted god, and generally, uh, depending on what part of the story and his lore you're looking at, he tends to get associated with more bad things than good things. It it is both though. He is like uh he's like had uh part of his lore where he's a, a, considered a very like chaotic. Uh, like God that causes calamities and plague and very bad things and he's associated with like the world of the dead and everything like that but there's also like a good side of him a heroic side of him uh, one that gets associated with like love and marriage too so it's like this guy is like somewhere sand sandwiched in between a bunch of stuff because he's got many sides to him so it almost feels like he, he would be when it comes to alignments it would be hard to place him anywhere uh, definitely more on the chaos side though I feel if you were going to play some. And then uh, you have Light Chaos, which is, um, you know, you have Sukiyomi, Nua. <sighs> I forgot his name, but I fucking love him. The armless guy uh, who casts lightning stuff. There's uh, Chernobog, Isla Lot, Ishtar. Uh, so I guess technically, like, a bit more orderly or lawful chaotic demons. But it de I think it does say under the description of light chaos that it, they are deemed chaos by the creator. So whatever, you know, creator at the time would deem them as like chaotic beings or beings aligned with chaos. It would be due to the creator's perspective that they're seen that way. You know, and then of course we have like just the major demons down here in dark chaos. So you, you know, have like Lamu and um, the Hydra, Seth. Ariok, Cert, the <laughs> Shiba's hench. He, <laughs> I don't remember his name. <laughs> the guy that that works for Shiba, uh, that's also considered a dragon of sorts. Um, but yeah, a lot of these are considered like evil, evil gods or, or evil demon kings, dragons, things like that. Um, they are under dark chaos. There is an interesting thing to consider, though, is that you know, with a lot of these demons. They, in, if you consider the Nahobino lore and how things went with the creator and all that, and the previous creators, um, a lot of these demons are, are like that exist in the game that seem evil are actually like degraded versions of the beings that they used to be. Uh, especially Lamu. Like, Lamu is vindictive as fuck in the game because they. Um, Lamu kind of got fucked out of like who they used to be. And uh, I believe they used to be, uh, I mean, and um, the, the form that you see, it, it seems to be a very degraded form of what Lamu used to be. And Lamu existed during the time when Bale was existing as a creator, and then Bale got taken out. And um, I think Lamu used to be 
the, uh, part of the, was it the Mesopotamian, uh, Bethel branch? They used to be part of Bethel. But then they got, got like, really gr degraded and everything like that after Baal was taken out. Apparently, Be did Bethel exist then? I guess it did. I don't fucking know. Com st story gets a little bit confusing sometimes, so I forget details. But yeah, I hope you find the, um... This alignment chart pretty interesting. I don't think it matters that much, the game, really. I, I think it's just sort of a fun thing to kind of, like, categorize demons with. Because the, unless it, they make that something, like, part of the... There's a whole demon backyard thing in uh, a Vengeance where you can raise, like, demon affinity and stuff. But I don't I don't think the alignments are really going to matter. It, it, it doesn't really matter in the game, but, like, I guess if you want... Uh, in the the perfect official guide, they do have the the demons, like labeled under certain alignments or under dark, or light, it, just for like categorization purposes. I guess I don't know. It doesn't matter too much in my opinion. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> uh, I swear, every time I come across I, I come across new bits of information, or I'm reminded of something that I need to go over again when it comes to like files or or supplemental literature. Um, I will say it does kind of suck when there's details, like like important details that people should know, especially um, in the, the, like say in the English audience. This is something that I've come across too um, as a, a collector of art books, like game art books. But um, I, I, I'm going to bring up being, me being a Resident Evil fan again because uh, a lot of books that I've collected over time like art books and everything like that that were in Japanese are um, Resident Evil art books. And a lot of those don't get localized to English. There's like a few, like the archives, uh, that have like uh, interesting extra details about characters and stories and events and things like that that you don't actually get in the games. And it's kind of like, it's a nice bonus. I guess, like, if you're a fan or, or, or a collector of stuff, they'll be able to have those and go like, Oh, well, the bonus of buying this is, is learning information that you wouldn't get in the game. You get to learn extra details. At the same time, it, it kind of, like, gates out people who aren't able to acquire those books or don't even, like, speak the language or, or can't translate things and stuff. Because uh, if you have, like, like, say, if you have, like, uh, information on characters that aren't in the games that are put in these art books, and the art books are only released in Japanese, and they don't get localized, then that gates out so many people learning about information that's that could be important, that, that people should really know about the games. It, just like the details I mentioned, like, you know, Koshibism being, uh, you know, possibly being a, a protofiend, and, like, Agami, you know, being the inheritor of Tsukiyomi's um, power, it's like, uh, those, shouldn't that, shouldn't have been in the game? Don't you think that should be in the game? Maybe it's actually in the Japanese version of the game. Like I said, I, I only played the English version, but I do think those details are quite important, and they would be important to know uh, before Vengeance comes out, but but it's just that, that issue with... Um, I don't know why game companies do it. I guess it's in some way... I, I can kind of see why. Like, you're sort of, like, rewarding uh, fans by giving them extra material that provides, like, e extra information about characters and stuff in a, in a supplemental guide or something that, for some reason, they didn't put in the game. Um, but at the same time, it's like, why didn't you put it in the game? I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I don't know if that's th that stuff's going to be explored. I, I mean, I feel like the Tsukiyomi thing... Is gonna end up getting explored though. Um, him or you as the protagonist being able to utilize Tsukiyomi's power. It seems obvious now with the the new form and everything. Um, I don't know. Uh, I do think uh, I will say in terms of art books, we don't have a full SMT5 art book yet, and um, I wanted. I was trying to figure out if I wanted to go over this in the same video. Maybe I'll make another video, uh, just going over like uh, the protagonist himself, because I feel like uh, there's some extra details. Maybe there's more that will come out. Um, but I feel like they're probably gonna end up putting it in the art book if they make one. But at the, I brought it up 
But the SMT uh, 30th anniversary expo that they did for the the Japanese audience, they had like this this event thing. I, I think it was tied to the concert too. I brought it up in the in the previous video. Um, but they had this like expo thing, and you could like walk through and, and like view different like materials related to the development of the game, which included like some related to characters. And, and like they had this thing that had like extra interesting details about the characters and stuff. Um, the only issue is like because like you know it's something you had to like walk through. You could just like sit there and like gawk at it and everything. Um, a lot of people like missed out on that information, or people were like, oh well. Why didn't you put it in our book? Please put this information in our book. Release an extra book later so that we can actually be able to read it and see it better. Uh, I was thankful that there are some users that actually like um, posted information, like some Japanese Twitter users that were, were able to like be able to see the information, like sort of like you know either take a mental note or write it down. But I might I might make a video of that uh, another time because um, honestly, most of the information that was uh, available for characters, SMT5 characters, was related to the protagonist, and it sort of, like, goes... I think it, like, ties over what his actual personality is. Like, the... I, I'll go over it in another video, but it, it's, like, one of those things where, oh, the person that's supposed to be a silent, uh, like, blank slate protagonist actually, you know, they do have their own personality, and, uh, that is the case with the other protagonists, too. Uh, that I will go over is like, you know, they, they don't, they aren't just like, you know, it's the same with the Demi Fiend too, and, and when they did the drama CD and stuff like that, it's like, yeah, when the game came out, it's an RPG, they're technically supposed to be a blank slate, and yet, they do have things that sort of define what uh, kind of person they are, even despite that, so I may make another video, I don't know about that, um, and, and sort of go over it, and, uh, go over the the possible personality that the um the protagonist has based on like what exists in supplemental material but hopefully they'll just hopefully they'll just release an art book i i feel like an art book is very necessary to learn more information about this game because there's really not enough i hope you enjoyed the information or what i can what i can scrape together uh like i said anticipating vengeance Hopefully we'll learn more stuff uh, in the future soon.